In this video, I will show you how you can run the new Llama 2 and the Llama chat model on your local computer. Hello and welcome back, guys. Yeah, that was a huge day for open source AI. Meta released a new model, which is called Llama 2. We already know the first Llama model, which was a foundation model. And this time, they not only released an improved version of this foundation model, they also published a fine-tuned chat version, which is called Llama 2 Chat. And in this video, I will show you how you can run both of them on your local computer. And let's not long wait, let's right hop into it. Let's go. Before we start, let's first look at the key changes and get a better understanding what has changed in Llama 2. And as you can see here, the key changes are that the context size has increased from 2048 tokens to 4096. Then the model was trained on 40% more tokens, leading to better results on common benchmarks. And this time the Llama 2 model is also allowed for commercial use. And last but not least, a fine tuned chat version got released. And according to a human evaluation, the responses of the Llama 2 chat model are more helpful than the ones from ChatGPT, which is really remarkable. But that's not all. As I said, the model got trained on 40% more tokens, leading to better results on common benchmarks. And as you can see in this graph, for the different model variants of 7 billion, 13 billion, 34 and 70 billion, we can see that the models still don't saturate. And if you would train them even longer and using more tokens, potentially they could perform even better. And this holds especially true for the 70 billion parameter model, while the 7 billion looks like it saturates a little bit more. While we can see for the 70 billion parameters, if you would use more tokens, very likely the training perplexity would even decrease further. And as I already said, According to human evaluation, the answers of the Llama 2 70 billion chat model are more helpful overall compared to those of ChatGPT, which is very interesting. And I'm like, we still have to remember this is a free model that we can use and reuse for commercial purposes, for our own purposes. So having a model with such capacities is really, really cool. And yeah, unless you have a business with more than 700 million monthly active users, you can use the Llama 2 model also for commercial purposes. And I mean, like if you have 700 or more monthly active users, then congratulations. I'm very sure you can afford building your own model. <laughs> but back to this human evaluation and the Llama 2 70 billion chat model. Maybe let's have a look how this model compares to the big players in the field, which are GPT-4 and the Palm 2L model. And here we can see that the Llama 2 model comes a little bit short compared to those big players. So for the MMLU benchmark, which covers a wide variety of different tasks, uh, we can see that the GBD4 model performs 86%, while the Llama 2 model only reaches 68% and falls short between both. And it's more comparable to the ChatGBT and the first Palm model version. However, please keep in mind that those are closed source models and we have to pay huge amounts of money to use them, especially if you're like a company and really excessively use their API. You really have to pay a lot and the Llama model is just for free. And now if we compare how the Llama 2 model performs or the results that the model achieves compared to other open source models, we can see that the Llama 2 model is overall the best performing open source model, which is really great that we have access to such a model. And as already said, especially on the MMLU, which is a very common benchmark and covers a broad variety of tasks. The model seems to perform really good in all the variants, also compared to the Falcon or the MPT model in their respective variants. And I guess this is just because the Llama 2 model was trained on more tokens than those models. And the only thing that really stands out here is the coding capability. Here we can see that the MPT model performs better on the 7 billion parameter variant and also if you compare the 30 billion and the 34 billion parameter variant that the MPT model overall is better at coding. And this we can also see here and the human evil, which is also um, a benchmark designated for coding capabilities. And here we can see as well that the model is a little bit better than the first Palm version, but definitely worse than ChatGPT um, or GPT 3.5. And yeah, this is, I guess, the biggest downside that the model is not super great at, at coding tasks. And some of you might remember that I did a video about how to fine tune the alpaca model, which was based on the first version of the Llama model. And this time the training distribution has changed a little bit. The model is targeted like the training distribution to English language. As you can see here, almost 90% of the text in our training data is in English language, while the next closest would be German with 0.17%, which is really low. 
And yeah, maybe that will be another trial worth seeing how the model performs if you fine tune it, especially if the language was not that much represented during pre-training. So if the model really can learn just by supervised fine tuning or if the model really would lack understanding of a certain language. So that could be a topic for a future video. If you guys would be interested, let me know in the comments. Also, I was already thinking if it would be worth a try to fine tune the Llama model in a way that their coding capabilities would increase, just to check out also based on different papers, for example, the fee one, which used a comparatively small amount of training data from textbooks, if that could be an approach to fine tune the Llama model to improve the coding capabilities. If you would be interested in a video like that, let me know in the comments and I will check it out. And now back to the Llama 2 model, as we can see here, it is primarily trained on English language. And I also tried a few simple German prompts, which the model understood, but often replied in English to me. So by default, I would say the capabilities to understand languages other than English is very limited with the Llama 2 model. And now one big highlight of the release of the Llama 2 model is that there's also a fine-tuned version for chat, which we already discussed has, according to human evaluation, slightly higher helpfulness in their response compared to ChatGPT, which is very remarkable. And how did they get there? Actually, they just needed about 27,000 high quality examples of instruction or prompts and responses, which is not too high. If you guys remember for the alpaca, the authors used 52,000 instruction following tasks. So this is almost a half of it. And that's also what the authors state in the paper here in the phrase quality is all you need. So they figured out it's not actually the quantity that matters. It's more if you fine tune the model, it's the quality of instruction and responses that you have. And then they use reinforcement learning with human feedback. That's also what we already know from the Instruct GPT paper. This is how probably ChatGPT got fine tuned or refined. So for that, they collected more than 1 million human labeled binary comparisons of two different responses of the fine tuned Llama model in terms of their helpfulness and safety, which is a huge amount. And finally, I would like to highlight that According to the community license agreement, it's forbidden to use answers from the Llama 2 model to train other large language models, or more specifically, any other large language model excluding Llama 2 or derivative works thereof. And I was wondering why they explicitly state this. And I could imagine that this paragraph in the paper is related to this, where they state, surprisingly, we found that the output sample from the resulting supervised fine-tuned model, so this is basically when they already trained the foundation model with 27,000 instruction and response examples. And what they found is that those responses from the supervised fine-tuned model were often competitive with the 27,000 instruction and responses handwritten by human annotators. The responses of the supervised fine-tuned model were selected through manual scrutiny though, which has to be mentioned, but obviously it's way easier to just say, yes, that's a good response or that no, that's not a good one, instead of writing a whole prompt and response to it. And yeah, I could see that maybe Meta saw this potential to also fine tune other models or even train other models. And because of that, they forbid to use the Llama models to train other models than the Llama 2 model or derivatives of it. All right, enough information about the Llama 2 paper. Now let's get started. Now let's run it on our local computer. And before we can start, you first need to request access to the Llama 2 model weights and tokenizer. And for this, you need to go to the Matter AI website and follow this link, which I will also link down in the description box. And here you need to fill in this form. Make sure to use the same email that you also use for your Hugging Face account, which will be very important later. And here you can see the community license agreement, which I also quoted from earlier, and the use policy. And then you just need to accept those and uh, click this button. And my request got accepted within 30 minutes. I don't know how long it will take for you. I think Meta states it takes up to one or two days, but hopefully it will be fast for you as well. And once you got notified via email that your request got accepted, then the only thing that's left is to go to one of the Llama 2 Hugging Face repositories, for example, the Llama 7B model, which I will also link down in the description box. And here you can see that I have already been granted access to this model. But for example, this is how it will look like if you don't have access yet, and then you can request access one more time. And for me, this worked right away. So I think once Matter has received your request with the email that you're also using for your Hugging Face account, then you just need to click this button and you get granted access right away to all the different model variants on Hugging Face. All right, once we have access to the Llama 2 model, we can start with the installation. 
And for this, I always recommend to use Miniconder and create a virtual environment. In case you haven't installed Miniconder, I will also link the installation guide also in my past videos. This, for example, those for comments would work for Linux or Mac users. And I think for Windows, you will definitely find an installation guide here if you use this installer. And then we will use those two comments to create a virtual environment. This is technically optional, but I always recommend it, especially if you have multiple Python projects, to just avoid version mismatches between the different projects. All right, and now we can go to our terminal or CMD and copy those two comments. So this one is to create the virtual environment and the second one is to activate or to switch to our created environment. And now we can see we are in our newly created environment. And the next thing that we will do is to clone the repository that contains my written code. I wrote some code that makes it super easy to use the new Llama 2 models and run them on a local computer with a visually appealing user interface. So we're not just working on a CLI or in, your in our terminal, but we use uh, Gradio actually, the module Gradio as a user interface. So we have something that looks a little bit like ChatGPT, like the website, and we can interact in a chat style with our Llama 2 chat model. So the code that I've written also support the two different model kinds. So the foundation model to just start a sentence or a sequence, and then the model predicts the next tokens or the next words, while the code also supports the chat model. And the chat model needs a certain input format, which took me a little bit to write the formatter because it's not just the prompt the way you write it. You have to format it a little bit. Um, but this is all covered in the repository. And yeah, makes it for you super easy. Basically, it's really in the end a one line comment once the installation is done to run the model. And for this, we will clone the repository, as I said. And I already have this repository or the folder on my system. So it says already exists. So in that case, I don't need to clone the repository anymore. And then we change our directory. So we navigate to the Llama 2 local folder. And then we will install all required modules, including, for example, Gradio or Transformers, to be able to run the model on our local computer. And now all our required modules get installed. OK, now we can see that all the required modules got installed. And now there's only one last step left, which is to log into our Hugging Face account in our runtime. And for this, we use the Hugging Face CLI and pass login as a command. And the Hugging Face CLI we have previously installed here. So we don't need to specifically install it anymore. And by running this prompt, you will be asked for your access token. And you can find your access token if you open this link, Hugging Face Co settings and tokens. So I already have this link open in a new tab, as you can see here. And here's basically my user settings, here are my access token. And it could be that you don't have an access token yet. So you would need to create a new one. You can use the role, maybe read or write. Read is already sufficient and you can pass a name but that's all doesn't matter. So what you will end up doing is just copy your um, access token. And then by pressing control V, you can just paste your access token and press enter then. And if you want, you can add the token to your Git credentials, but that's not necessary. Okay, perfect. And now we can see I'm logged in successfully. And this allows me to access the Llama 2 models from Hugging Face. Otherwise I would get an error message that I don't have permission to download the model weights, the Llama 2 model weights. Um, yeah, and that's it. Now the installation is done and we can finally run the Llama 2 models on our local computer. Woohoo! And now it's time to shine. Now we can finally run the Llama 2 model on our local computer. And as we all know, the AI community is very fast. So we not only can use the original model weights for the Llama 2 model, but there are also already quantized model versions on Hugging Face. So we can also use them. For example, I'm working right now on my Mac and I don't have access to any NVIDIA GPU. So for me, it would be unfeasible to run any Llama 2 model on my computer right now. But since there are quantized model versions, especially the GGML quantized model versions, which some of you potentially know under the name Llama CPP or C++. And yeah, this allows me to run this model version. And this is also covered in the code that I have written. You can either use the full precision model, like the original model weights, but for that you would need either multiple GPUs or a GPU with a lot of VRAM. Otherwise you can use the GPTQ quantized model variants, which require way less VRAM. So for example, I could easily fit in a 13 billion parameter model variant on a Colab notebook, which otherwise I couldn't even load the seven 
billion parameter original variant. So yeah, thanks to the GPTQ quantization, I was able to load a larger sized model. However, of course, this comes with a trade-off. The model overall is less precise and the predictions are less accurate. So don't expect to reach the same results on the benchmarks as stated in the paper if you use the quantized model variants. And yeah, as you can see here, for all those different variants and the GGML quantized, GPTQ quantized model variants and the original ways I've stated already the one line commands you use for my script or for my code to run the model. And yeah, I would say now let's give it a try, right? So since I'm working on my local computer, I will use the GGML quantized uh, Llama 7B chat variant. And for this, I would just copy this link and paste it here in my terminal and press enter. And now, et voila. Hopefully it works. <laughs> and yeah, I hope you see something similar to what I'm seeing here right now. So here we can see that the Llama CPP model got successfully loaded. This is indicated usually by something that looks similar to this print statements here. And now the Gradio interface is running. So we can just use our local URL. Instead, you're running this on a cloud GPU or something. You can also use the public URL. And now I just copy this link in my browser and can access the Gradio interface. And as you can see here, this is basically our chatbot interface and this is my text box. So I can just ask a model, hey, why would you subscribe to a YouTube channel? Obviously not for typing out fast. <laughs> now we can see that our model is processing. For some reason, the CPU version is pretty slow. I tried it also with a GPTQ, as I said, in a Colab notebook, and that was way faster. So let me know if you would be interested in me creating a Colab notebook as well for this code. I'm like, I hope by following this tutorial, it's very easy for you to recreate, for example, a Colab notebook or do it in whatever environment you would like to. Okay, now we can see that the model starts typing. So, um, so for some reason the initialization took longer, but now the uh, creation actually is fairly fast, I would say. And yeah, I guess that would keep going now. One thing, maybe the first point, ex access to exclusive content. I mean, like maybe the code today can can be given as exclusive content. So if you like this video, you know, I would appreciate if you subscribe to my channel. Also, if you want to support me. So, you know, we directly have two flies and one clap. So yeah, and as I have shown you here in this article, I will also link this in my GitHub repository. So overall, there's a readme that describes again how to install the whole model and how to run the specific Llama models. So feel free to also check out my GitHub repository where you can just copy all those uh, commands here and then you can just run the different model variants. And yeah, let me know in the comments if this is helpful because I think this is a very minimal implementation and it quickly allows you to interact with state-of-the-art large language models on your local computer in a yeah visually appealing way in this chatbot. So um, yeah, I thought it's definitely worth sharing with you guys and I'm very happy to hear what you think about it. All right, guys, and that's it for today's video. I hope you liked it. Hope you're happy with what I have shown you today. And I was thinking maybe even extending my code. So to add like an upload, area the chatbot interface to allow for example to upload pdf documents and then you can interact and ask the chatbot about contents of the pdf document would that be something you would also be interested in as always let me know in the comments and then i can maybe do a video about it and yeah thank you so much for watching and i see you in the next video goodbye <laughs>